Hello, this is the second in our series of videos discussing multiple comparison techniques. In the previous video, we mentioned the idea is that after rejecting the null hypothesis in a one-way ANOVA, or any ANOVA for that matter, uh, the ANOVA itself only says that there are differences between the treatment groups. It does not tell us which groups are different. So com multiple comparisons are a way of trying to decide which of the treatment groups are really different. And we mentioned what complicates this is the fact that as you do more comparisons, you have more groups you have to compare, the probability of making false discoveries or finding false difference goes up dramatically. And this is a very big problem, especially in larger experiments where there could be hundreds, thousands, and I mentioned in genomics even millions of comparisons where you are guaranteed to find differences that don't really exist. So what I did uh, at the end of the video, I said we're now going to discuss various methods for finding differences. And R.A. Fisher, uh, who first addressed this problem, he really developed ANOVA, suggested a procedure where first, if you do reject uh, the null hypothesis in the ANOVA, in other words, the F-test rejects, then do all possible two-sample t-tests between the groups. And what we're going to do is actually use jump and show Fisher's method. And I'm using a data set called filtration. This is an, actually an experiment which compared four different filtration methods to see how they removed impurities from the water. And for each filtration method, there are 10 replicates. And the response is a measure of part per million total impurities. So I'm going to go to fit y by x. And in fit y by x, filtration is x. The experimental factor in the measured response is impurities. Okay. So the first thing we could do, let's move this over, expand it out a little bit for you, is to perform one-way ANOVA. Okay, so we do the one-way ANOVA. We look in the ANOVA table, and sure enough, we reject. This says there are clearly some significant differences between the filtration methods in terms of the average uh, amount of impurities. The, f the question now becomes, which are different? Well, remember, Fisher's idea is just do all possible two sample t-tests. Since the number of levels is four, there are six possible comparisons. So I'm going to click on the main report menu, come down to compare means, and the first option is basically each pair will do all possible two sample t-tests. Okay. And jump gives us what it calls okay, comparison circles. Basically, these are visualizations of two sample t-tests. And very simply, okay, if you click on one circle, it will become bold red. If any other treatment groups are significantly different, they turn a bold gray. If you click on one, and another circle uh, also is red, for instance, here we have B and D, that indicates they are not significantly different. Now, there are only six tests here, but suppose I wanted to control the overall experiment-wise error rate, or what I call the false discovery rate. I said one of the things you can do, for instance, the Bonferroni method, is change the overall level for rejection, in other words, the significance level, to something smaller such that the overall uh, experiment-wise error rate doesn't exceed, say, 0.05. To illustrate that, okay, 
in the main report menu if you scroll down there's something called set alpha so I can set that significance level and I'm going to change it to point zero zero eight and I showed in the uh, part one notes multiple comparisons part one which I asked you to read for the first video um, we showed that point zero zero eight would give us an overall experiment wise error rate of point oh five okay so we make the change notice we haven't changed our conclusions but do notice that um, the bottom two three B C and D are now close to being uh, rejected again what's going on I'm going to leave it to you to read the notes and learn about comparison circles and by the way I'll show you throughout the remainder of the discussion at the bottom of the uh, report window they actually give you a report that clearly spells out the statistics uh, and the results okay so what I'm going to do is close this and I'm going to go back to the notes for a while so I'm going to go back on slideshow okay. okay so I went through and I showed you the multiple comparison technique and an important concept in these uh, all of the methods I'm about to discuss in fact even a two sample t-test is something we call the least significant difference that is and some people call it the LSD it's a very old term in statistics that is what's the minimum distance between two treatment means before we can confidently say they're different and that is reject the null hypothesis so you can statistically compute this distance then just compare all the treatment means to each other and if any of them are farther apart than this uh, least significant difference you declare them to be different and down below I show the least significant difference for a two sample t-test so one of the ways we could do the test is to simply compute this difference this LSD then just compare all the differences between the treatment means and see which ones exceed the LSD in fact that's commonly done in multiple comparisons rather than explicitly looking at each t two sample t-test value so very simply if the difference between any two groups and we use the absolute difference we just want to know the magnitude of the difference reject so we go back to our example where we looked at the uh, impurities for the filtration experiment I did the two sample t test at the bottom of the report window okay was an analysis notice you see the LSD so for a comparison between any two of these treatment groups if the overall difference exceeds 0 0.703 we declare them difference in other words the difference is large enough that this is not simply noise they must really be different notice something else you get that makes it easy to understand uh, the results now I find the comparison circles useful but not everyone finds them intuitive there's also something called the connecting letters report okay. and by the way here my treatments are A, B, C and D that's just a coincidence in a connecting letters report any uh, treatments that are different get their own letter so the letters uh, are not related to the treatment groups this is strictly a coincidence so A is highest all by itself it's significantly higher than all the others D and B cannot be told apart indeed they may be equal and then finally treatment C has its own letter and it is significantly the lowest 
And by the way, uh, if you look, they also give you the differences. So if I know the LSD is 0 0.703, notice there is only one set of comparisons that um, are not greater than the LSD, and that's D and B. So we assume all the other treatment comparisons are significant except D and B. They appear to be about the same. This is essentially how uh, the each compare each pair or doing all possible to sample t tests works. Okay. Well, there are many different procedures uh, that are used. Again, it depends on the question you're asking. And one procedure I'll talk about is called Dunnett's. Dunnett's test was invented for the pharmaceutical industry. It is only relevant, and this is a key point, it's only relevant if one of the treatments is a control. And in this scenario, in Dunnett's method, I only compare the other treatments back to the control. No other comparisons are done. We just want to know if each of the non-control treatments is different from the control. That actually limits the total number of comparisons and keeps the false discovery rate down. Okay. And there is an LSD for this procedure. I will not get into it. Uh, this uh, constant, this D that you see with three indices, um, is actually something determined from a lookup table. And you could actually Google this and find tables on the internet for Dunnett's test. But we're using software, and most good statistical software does this test, and they supply uh, the formulas for the LSD. So basically, it's the same idea. If any treatment is significantly different or distant from the control, that is, it exceeds the LSD, then we reject. So basically, for the filtration experiment, let's call A the control. Let's assume maybe A didn't even have a filter. Okay. So basically, in Dunnett's method, we simply compare each group back to the control. And by the way, I've by hand, I've done out the LSD calculation. And you can see B, C, and D, all three of them, greatly exceed the LSD. Therefore, we conclude that uh, all three of these are significantly lower, actually, than the control. Okay. So let's go back to jump. I'm going to discard my writing. And this time, we'll go back to fit y by x. So just as we I've been showing, first I'll do the student T procedure. And at the bottom of the slide, you see all the comparisons, the LSD, and the so-called connecting letters report, which many people find uh, very easy to read. Uh, next, I'm going to highlight treatment A. So I'm going to click on Compare Means and select the bottom, which is Dunnett's, which is Comparisons Back to a Control. Okay. We go down. At the bottom of the page is the report. A is the control. And <clears throat> by the way, if you look at A, it gives you the LSD, 0.85. And just as I said in the notes, D, B, and C greatly exceed the LSD. Therefore, A is substantially larger in <coughs> overall impurities than the other three methods. OK, so this is called Dunnett's method. And the reason I show Dunnett's method, which is important, and I need to reopen Actually, I'm just going to show you and jump. I'm going to describe another method. You can read this in the notes. 
And there's another method under compare means. It's actually based upon Dunnett's method, but it's called choose multiple comparison with best, MCB comparison with best. Here's how shoes method works. If you're interested in finding a best condition, either the largest response level or the lowest response level, then shoes is appropriate. So if you're not interested in finding a best treatment level, shoes is not report, um, not really appropriate. It's only when you're looking for a best condition. So remember Dunnett's method, you pick a control, or it should be have been identified in the experiment, and you compare each group back to the control. Well, shoes is a similar idea, but instead of picking a control, if I were interested in finding the treatment condition with the largest response, I would click on it. And what I would do, I would think of that largest response as the control. And then I would compare all the other treatments back to that largest. In other words, the largest isn't a control, but I treat it like a control in making the comparisons. Likewise, if I wanted to compare back to the smallest, that is the smallest response is best. And by the way, in this experiment, smaller is really better. The smaller the amount of impurities, the better the filtration. So I would select treatment C as best, and then I would compare the other three treatments back to C, and I would do no other comparisons. And if we scroll down at the bottom of the slide, we see the results. I'm going to recommend it's these threshold matrices. Don't even look at them. They're confusing. Just take a look at the comparisons. And this is the key report. Comparisons with min and a max. So if I want a max, first I identify A like a control. Then I compare B, C, and D back to the control. I don't do any other comparisons. Notice all three are significantly smaller. So we would say A is a significantly highest treatment. In other words, it's if you want higher, it's the best. On the other hand, and this is the case we're really interested in, if I want my best is a minimum, I identify the response level uh, with the lowest, the overall lowest response, that C, and then I compare A, D, and B back to C. No other comparisons are done. And what do we find? C is a significantly lowest treatment. So we'd walk away and say if lower impurities is best, then filter C is the best of the methods that we looked at. It has the lowest response. And this is referred to as choose multiple comparison with best. Okay. And then finally, there's one last method. And this sounds a little odd. It's called Tukey's Honestly Significant Difference. Similar to Students T, it does all possible comparisons, but it uses um, a different approach. It doesn't use two sample t tests, and it uses an approach which is guaranteed to keep the experiment-wise error rate or false discovery rate low. The difference is it does this by sacrificing power. So the details of how you calculate the HSD, which is actually another form of least significant difference, is given in the notes. And I'll let you read it. So I'm going to do Tukey's method. So in Tukey's method, again, we've done all possible comparisons. And at the bottom of the table are the results. Okay. 
And in the case of two keys, again, two keys is structured such that it makes uh, much less false discoveries than doing all two sample t-tests, but it does so at the expense of power. So it is not unusual, especially with a lot of treatments, that uh, the student T procedure in two keys do not agree. In this particular case, if we look at the connecting letters report, we get the same result. In other words, we conclude A is significantly highest, C is significantly lowest, D and B cannot be told apart. Okay. Again, the primary difference um, in Tukey Kramer is how you calculate the LSD, or they call it their honestly significant difference. Because if you say two treatments are different by this method, they really should be different. And remember, for the two sample t test, which is shown up above, if I scroll all the way up, okay, this is the do all possible two sample t tests. The LSD is 0 0.703. For two keys, it's 0 0.934. So treatments have to be um, have a greater difference in their means in order to be found different. So what do we conclude from these tests? Number one, okay, the student T procedure is the most powerful. It finds the most differences. It also makes the most false discoveries. Okay. By the way, if you compare the sizes of the circles, they're proportional to the power of the test. So the bigger the circle, the lower the power. Dunnett's procedure, only appropriate if you have a true control group. Okay. Um, it has a overall false discovery rate of 0.05 and is slightly less powerful, the testing method, than the two sample t-test. Shoes method is actually a really nice procedure. Okay. It again, because we only make comparisons to what we define as a best group, a largest or a smallest, it performs similar to Dunnett's, but it has more power. In fact, it's about as powerful as the two sample t test, and it holds the false discovery rate to 0.05. Okay. Unfortunately, Shu's multiple comparison with best is only useful if we are really looking for a best condition, and that may not always be the question we're asking. And then finally, the Tukey Kramer honestly significant method, like students T, makes all possible comparisons. It has the lowest power of these methods. It, it'll find the smallest number of real differences, but it does hold the false discovery rate over all those tests to 0.05. Okay. So this is a discussion I've gone over of the common methods for making multiple comparisons, and these are the four that are supported by JUMP.